Hey everybody, Mario Dennis here with the Keeping It Real Estate podcast. And today we are doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes here um, because we just got some news and I've received a lot of messages about it. And I felt that because uh, we've spent a great um, amount of time in the podcast talking about iBuyers, this is something that we should perhaps cover um, and give some thoughts on. And I'll put this on the screen as soon as I get it here. Uh, there it is. Um, so the news is Keller Williams expands iBuy and Reach and Deal with OfferPad. Uh, real estate firm Keller Williams is joining with home sales platform OfferPad, expanding its reach into the fast-growing market of algorithm-driven home sales. The realty franchise center all cash online sales market known as a buyer last May. The new agreement will give OfferPad first dibs. Anytime a Keller Williams customer wants to sell to an iBuyer instead of putting the home on the open market, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're launching in two markets, Dallas and Phoenix. Good luck, guys, in Dallas and Phoenix. Um, what else we have here? OfferPad was previously part of similar similar pilot program with Zillow that ended last year. After Zillow decided it would begin buying homes and selling homes by itself, the new venture with Keller Williams is much more formalized, said CEO of OfferPad. Uh, last month, Open Door struck an agreement with the brokerage Redfin. Uh, sorry, I like my little sound effects here. Um, which will allow sellers to request a quote from Open Door on its website. In recent earnings call, Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman said the move was meant to allow users to get access to iBuyer offers when it cannot meet um, demand. Um, the article is in the Wall Street Journal, so you can um, go and read it anytime. Um, I'll tell you my thoughts on it. My two cents that are, I don't know if I said that already, but my two cents that are less than two actual cents um, it's very simple. I know a lot of Keller Williams agents, a lot of them. I was an agent in Keller Williams myself for a number of years. In fact, the best real estate agents that I know came from Keller Williams or spent time in Keller Williams. And I don't know that that's necessarily a coincidence. I think um, that's part of the systems that, um, that were in place at one point and the training and the growth of that company. However, this is not something that I can get behind, man. This is bad news. The agents that I know from Keller Williams are awesome. They are some of the best real estate agents that I know. Like I said, um, they do not need this bullshit shiny object on their tool belt, in their tool belt, to go and talk to sellers. The good Keller Williams agents that I know can go into a listing appointment, slay a listing take it, sell it, and make sure that that seller makes a whole lot more money than they are going to make if they sell to an eye buyer. So who does this benefit? I don't know. I'm not sure it benefits the agents, that's for sure. Um, and I think that this is one of those times where, um, in my opinion, um, there is, you know, we always hope in our business that the interest of the brokerage and the interest of the agents kind of like move together, but oftentimes they move separately. And maybe this is one of those times. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't necessarily think that this helps the agents. It surely doesn't help the consumers. Um, for those that don't know what iBuyers are, um, we have a lot of podcasts that talk about it um, and clips of podcasts that talk about it. Uh, but basically, they are folks that are trying to make money from the equity that you earned uh, by assuming the risks associated with owning and maintaining a home. Um, I buyers are still doing a lot of things that I don't necessarily agree with, like not advertising what the convenience fee is going to be up front, meaning if you go to their website, you don't know how much they're going to charge you until... You give them all of your personal information, your home's information, and all other details. Um, and then they send you an offer that discloses what is going to cost you. But at this point, you've already given them all your information. By the way, if you are a consumer and you're saying, well, what does it matter if I give them my information? Let me explain something to you. The holy grail of real estate lead generation is sellers that are ready, willing, and able to sell. Um, so don't think that information is just going into the shredder and no one is ever looking at it. That is 
very valuable information for real estate agents to know. Um, so my guess is probably that information is eventually going to end up getting sold to real estate agents, but I could be wrong about that. Um, so they're data mining, meaning they're taking your information um, in order to sort of lift the veil of the cost associated uh, with selling them your home. Then they uh, they send you, I've seen some some of them send like this net sheet side by side where they compare what they are offering you to what a traditional real estate transaction would look like, which by the way, there's no such a thing. Uh, but in that comparison, generally they skew the facts significantly to make their offer seem a lot more attractive than it is in the real world. Um, and then they do inspections and most of the time, I think, they are going to be hitting you up for a bunch more money after the inspections um, in order for you to cover the repair costs or the upkeep costs um, of whatever the inspection report reveals, something that is not customary in home sales in our market in that two to $500,000 price point, um, which is why it's very important for sellers to have someone represent them, someone in their corner that knows market conditions and knows what's customary and what is not customary. Um, so again, um, if there is someone listening to this that um, wants to have a discussion about it, the Keller Williams agents that, that disagrees with my assessment on it, that they think this generally is going to bring value to their arsenal, um, I'd love to hear their reasoning about it. Um, I, I'm, I'm very much invested in having reasonable conversations with people um, about things, even when we disagree, um, and we can do that here. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts. I don't think this this is necessarily a good thing for agents. I definitely don't think it's a good thing for consumers. Um, and I think it actually, it helps um, a company like OfferPad who already had a deal fall through with Zillow of a similar nature. Um, I, I think, you know, when you already have one of those partnerships die um, and uh, Open Door did the partnership with Redfin, I think OfferPad was... Um, in a position where they needed to create one of these partnerships to continue to exist, and I, I just wish, um, I just wish this wouldn't have happened, and definitely not with Keller Williams, because um, a company that had, in my personal opinion, um, not being uh, reviewed uh, very fairly, now gets to associate themselves with a company that's a giant of the real estate world, and that will automatically give them credibility that I don't think they've earned otherwise. Um, but anyways, um, if you have any thoughts on it, want to discuss more about it, or um, whether you agree or disagree with me, let me know. Come on the podcast. Let's talk about it. Um, if you are not in the Central Florida area, we can do the podcast um, tele via telephone. It's a lot less exciting, um, but it still can be done, and we can have a meaningful conversation about it. Um, Everybody have a great day and we'll see you next week with new episodes of the Keeping It Real Estate podcast. Ciao.